topic of the Sound. Sound is the topic. What's cool about, what do you think is sort of cool about this? Anybody? When you change the length of the tube, the um, pitch changes too. Exactly. The pitch changes as we change the length of the tube. A lot of what we do in this unit is going to be about figuring out how to do that. We'll also be looking at things like this. You take this tube here, and we do this, we put an end on it, and suddenly, what did you notice? Huh? It did, by about how much? About an octave, yeah. About an octave. Okay, and what we're going to do at the end, or towards the end of the lectures, is we're actually all going to practice making music with these things. <laughs> Believe it or not. Okay? So, anybody who's a musician, actually many, many physicists are really good musicians. There's something about music and its logical progressions that appeal to the physicist's brain. I'm terrible at music, so that makes me a terrible physicist as well. Okay, we're going to look at these topics. We're going to look at characteristics of sound, intensity of sound, and decibels. Who's heard the word decibels before? Okay. And the ear and its response, and what we mean by loudness. Sources of sound, vibrating strings and air columns. These would be, this would thing here is a vibrating air column, right, which is resonating. Quality of sound and noise, superposition, interference of sound and beats. I've already shown you beats, right? Nothing unusual. The Doppler effect, who's heard of the Doppler effect? Doppler radar for weather, right? Okay, so sound can travel through any kind of matter, but not through a vacuum. A vacuum is an absence of matter, right? No oxygen, no nitrogen, nothing. That's a vacuum. We can actually create better vacuums here on Earth than you can get in space. Right? Fewer particles per cubic meter than are found in space, believe it or not. Because space is actually filled with a little bit of stuff, like hydrogen. The speed of sound is different in different materials. Who's ever seen one of those Western movies where the guy sticks his head on the rail to listen to see if a train is coming? very fortunate that the speed of sound in steel is much, much higher than the speed of sound in air. Otherwise, he'd have a bit of a problem, right? Put his head down, off. So, in general, sound is slowest in gases, faster in liquids, and fastest in solids. Air, 343 meters per second. Iron and steel, 5,000 meters per second. Five kilometers per second, four miles per second about. Or three, three point something miles per second. That's pretty fast. The speed depends somewhat on temperature, especially for gases. The interesting thing is that it does not depend on pressure only slightly on pressure. To all intents and purposes, the pressure is irrelevant. Okay? But it does depend on the temperature. Here's one of the things that we might do with ultrasound waves. That is autofocus, right? We have sound wave, ultrasound sound wave coming out here, hitting off this person, comes back, the camera registers it, 
and is able to determine the distance and therefore exactly how far out the camera's lens should be to focus. Loudness is related to the intensity of the sound wave. Not exactly the same, it's related to it. Pitch is related to frequency. So frequency is one part of pitch, but there are also some subjective qualities to pitch, because usually when we're talking about pitch, we're talking about particular notes, right? Whereas frequency can be any frequency. The audible range is from about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. If you're a teenager, maybe 13, and haven't been to many rock concerts and have not been putting loud music in your ears, you probably can hear towards the upper end of the range. If you're an old guy like me, you probably can only hear up to like eight to 10,000 hertz. Right? And in fact, as you get older, your, your hearing range becomes narrower and narrower as damage is done to the cilia in your ears. One of the worst things you can do is put loud music in because what it will do is actually um, damage the cilia and you will in fact lose your hearing much earlier. So, I mean, we know the science behind hearing and I know it's nice to listen to um, music through your earbuds, but if it's louder than, if it's so loud that you cannot hear what's going, or conversations around you, it's too loud. So ultrasound, word ultra means above, right? It's above 20,000 hertz. Infrasound is below 20 hertz. Now, there was some interesting research done recently that found certain types of animals actually communicate with infrasound. Anyone know what they are? Bats actually communicate with ultrasound, not infrasound. Oh. Infra, infra, oh, infra. Infra. Oh, infra means oh, below, elephants, right? Elephants, huh? Elephants. Elephants, yes. So when yeah, female elephants, 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 so the, the way elephants organize themselves is the females and the youngsters all go off in one pack, and the males actually go off together by themselves. When the females are in estrus, right, they need a male around. So what they do is they communicate via infrasound. And depending on what the conditions are like, in atmospheric conditions are like, they can communicate, I believe, up to 100 kilometers away, right? So they send out these noises and the bull elephants come running. By the way, did you know that they were having a problem with juvenile male elephants in um, Africa at one point? They, had, they relocated all these juvenile elephants. And what happened was they found out that they became like little, uh, what do you call them? Uh, punks. <laughs> really? They became like punks. They were doing things like they would walk up to a rhinoceros and tip him over. <laughs> no, really. Huh? Yeah. Or they would go around doing things like destroying trees. Yeah, because they had to take them away from their parents. So they didn't right, so what they did to solve the problem, they brought in some old male bull elephants. And basically, they got them in line. Right? It's sort of interesting, right? I mean, you can see the parallels with teenagers and having fathers around. Right? Teenage boys and having fathers around. Maybe not teenage girls. I don't think that actually helps. I think teenage <laughs> girls more, tend to twist more. their fathers around their fingers. Okay, intensity of sound, decibels. What is a decibel? Well, you can look at this and you can see that there's a difference between the intensity, which is watts per square meter, right? and decibels. The threshold of hearing 
we take as being a sound level of zero decibels. A jet plane at 30 metres, 140 decibels. That's um, 100 times above the pain threshold. Right? 10 decibels is a factor of 10. 20 decibels is a factor of 100. 30 decibels is a factor of 1,000. So when you look at this, you can see the dynamic range of the human ear is amazing, right? It can hear from over how many orders of magnitude? So if we've got, so this is 12 orders of magnitude, right? That's a lot of dynamic range. And the way the ear copes with that dynamic range is not to be linear, but to be logarithmic in its response, right? So the decibel is based on a logarithmic scale. Intensity is based on a linear scale in watts per square meter. Okay, so the energy of a wave, intensity of a wave is the energy transfer order per unit time across a unit area. So energy per unit time is also known as Energy per unit time. Power, power. power right. Energy per unit time is power, and the units are watts. Okay. So the human ear can detect sounds with an intensity as low as 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared and as high as one watt per meter squared. But the perceived loudness is actually not proportional to the intensity. It's actually a logarithmic scale. So, sound level is measured in decibels. And it's a scale that was defined by Alexander Graham Bell, who was a professor at Boston University when he invented the telephone. Who knew that? Oh, okay. But where did he hail from? If it said the United Kingdom, I would have said okay. Okay. So, sound level, right? Sound level, beta, in decibels, is given by this. 10 times the log to the base 10 of the intensity present divided by the um, basic intensity, which we take to be the threshold of human hearing. One by 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. If we want to find a relative increase in loudness, convert the difference of sound in dB to B. So basically, a dB is a decibel, one tenth of a bell. You're going to convert it to bells. So if you want to convert to bells from decibels, you have to divide by 10. And then you do the calculation. Loudness equals 10 to the power of B. Right? Because this B is the logarithm to the base 10 of 10 to the B, right? Who remembers about logarithms? When did you last do logarithms? September? Okay. But now, now you see why it's useful to have something like a logarithmic scale or understand how to deal with logarithms. So in open areas, the intensity of the sound diminishes with distance. That is, it's in what sort of law? What sort of law do we call that? An inverse square law. Thank you, Laura. 
Good job. Our enclosed spaces is complicated by reflections. And if sound travels through air, the higher frequencies get preferentially absorbed. So let's have a look at the ear. You've probably done this in anatomy, right? Or in biology or something? Bio. Bio? No? So here's an ear canal. Here's the ear drum, right? Um, we've got some sort of holes in here. Here's the cochlea, <laughs> which transmits through the auditory nerve to the uh, brain. So a cochlea implant is actually replacing this. So in the outer ear, sound waves travel down the ear canal to the eardrum, which vi vibrates in response. In the middle ear, these different sized bones transmit the different frequencies more effectively. Very fast. Inner ear, the cochlea transforms vibrational energy to electrical energy and sends signals to the brain. If we look at graphs of the ear sensitivity, right, with frequency, and we do it on a logarithmic scale, right, so here we've got the frequency on a logarithmic scale, we've also got the intensity here, but this is the sound level, which is a logarithmic scale. It's sort of flat, right, which is what you'd like to see. Right, and when, when you're ever looking at an amplifier, audio amplifier, you want to see a flat response over the entire frequency range. Everybody familiar with that concept? No? In concept, yes. Okay. Slight curve. Maybe a slight curve, yeah. Low intensities and high intensities often lead to long term damage. I'm just talking about the flatness, not the level. Yeah. 